You're listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series that syndicates for the A-List Online, and my name is Andrew Mackay-Smith. The interview subject that I've got prepared for you today is Rufus Tiger Taylor. He's the drummer in the darkness, and he has been known to spend some time in his dad's band called Queen. You may have heard of them. The reason for the conversation is twofold. It's to promote the brand new album for The Darkness, which will be out on October 4, called Easter is Cancelled. It's a sterling effort. And also the fact that the band, The Darkness, will be touring Australia in March of 2020. So today's date being the 6th of September 2019. It's some time away, but why don't I read out the dates? Wednesday the 11th of March, they're playing in Fremantle. The 13th of March, which is a Friday, they're playing in the Great Enmore Theatre, which is in Sydney. 14th of March, which is a Saturday, they're playing in Melbourne. The Gov in Adelaide, uh, that's the 15th, that's a Sunday. The Tivoli, we here in Brisbane get a show, which is on a Wednesday. And I know it's not Australia, but in Auckland, New Zealand, there's a show at Power Station on Friday the 20th of March. So here he is. Oh, actually, before I let you go, the call did cut out a couple of times. So about two-thirds of the way through, you'll hear that the call the, the the podcast fades out and then it comes back in again the reason for that i think i don't think it was me to be honest with you i think it was uh tiger being in an area that didn't quite have great mobile coverage but it doesn't matter anyway it's a quality conversation this one here as usual hope you enjoy it hope you enjoy it i've had a few drinks sorry it's been one of those nights but here he is it's rufus tiger taylor Hello, have I, are you there? Hey, Tiger. Yeah, no worries, mate. It's all right. You, I'll hold, mate. You're going to do whatever you got to do. No, no, yeah, no, all good. Mate, how's the, uh, oh how's, the how's the me? <laughs> you're right. You go. Sorry, I got so the the the, the other interview is coming through as well. So don't worry, I'll just ignore it. Let, let it ring out. Oh, okay, all right, no worries, um, mate. I've got to ask, mate. How's the uh, the Aussie media contingent been treating you? Has it been a busy day for you? It has indeed. Um, yeah, done. I think I did um, five interviews in the in the car <laughs> whilst driving. Um, maybe I shouldn't have said that. I had I had hands free safety equipment of course you did. all in place. I knew what you mean. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's exactly. it, it's um, good from the perspective that I, I know there was a lot of interest in uh, both the album and the tour from the Australian media side of things. So you are popular here, as I'm sure you're aware. Well, we we absolutely fucking love it there. Every time we go there, we have so much fun. Was, we can't wait to come back. I was going to ask you that. I mean, we must be one of your, in terms of per head per capita, mate. We must be the territory that does probably the best for you. Would you would you say that's the case? Um, it's funny because uh, I don't know. It's always. I mean, for some reason, Italy they just go nuts. Like the the, the scale. Every time we go there, it just jumps up a few knots. Wow. Yep. Um, but uh, but we'll claim the English speaking yeah, world title. Then. It's there definitely, you go. it's definitely up there. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely up there. Yeah. You sorry, know. sorry, sorry about Steve Smith too, mate. If you've been following the Ashes as well, but we hope he gets another two hundred next time he bats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, I don't watch such things. Oh, is that right? Oh, you're not tuned in, are you? No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Oh, right. <laughs> Have you been watching it, though? Uh, yeah, I, I saw I saw, um, I saw a little bit of of, uh, of a really of a, good, a great England game the other day. I can't remember who it was even against. I was in the pub, you see. Oh, you um, mean when England played Ireland in the rugby? Or, or the cricket? <laughs> no, it was the cricket. It was the cricket. All right, yeah. It was the same day as a big football game as well. I can't remember. All right. Um yeah, no, I must have been pissed. It's been a great night. <laughs> Mate, let's, uh, let's talk about this. Uh, okay, I know you've got a tour, but let's talk about the album because I'm actually really enjoying the album. I've got a stream version, streaming version of it. The thing I've always loved about the Oh, darkness, brilliant. You know, the thing I've always loved about you guys is you've always got your tongue firmly planted in cheek. Could be butt cheek, could be your mouth cheek, whatever. I think you guys are the Monty Python of the music world at the moment, you know, and this new album called Easter is Cancelled just plays right into that. And, you know, the first impression yeah. that I have of it was, okay, so I saw the video, um, but the album cover, man, that's just awesome. I love it. You've got to start printing flags and T-shirts with this album cover. So that's actually my first question yeah, for you yeah. is, who does the artwork for the band? Because they really get what you guys are about. Yeah, no, we've we've got this um, amazing Italian lady called um, Chiara, and she um, she's an absolutely amazing artist and painter, and 
and yeah, we 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 gave her obviously the the idea we wanted, and 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 that's what she produced, and we were just like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, we think it's it's beautiful in a way. Yeah, well, the artwork's always been like that. I just think this is probably the band's best artwork. It's certainly the most fitting. I know when, I know when John sent through the request for the interviews or you know the opportunity to interview, and it said Easter is cancelled. I thought the tour was cancelled. To be honest with you, so I love the fact that you're almost trolling journalists at the same time with the album title. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. There's heaps going on. It's all good stuff, mate. Oh, thanks. So glad to know you. Um, appreciate it. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. And look, I guess on a oh, not so serious note. God, let's not get too serious too quickly. But track two is called <laughs> "Rock and Roll Deserves to Die." But does it really deserve to die, mate? Because I think you guys are keeping it alive. You guys and Airborne are really doing it. Yeah. No. No. It's it's more of a it's a, you know it, it, that song even ends in a rock and roll homage. You know, it's not. It's um, it's just you know we're we're just a little bit pissed about the um kind of just generic rock scene at the moment yeah. it's just it's just not there you know there's nothing there's nothing original there's not a lot of um i don't know it's just a lot of depressing kind of <laughs> yeah shit you know what it's not fun there's no yeah exactly and that's what it's all fucking about so so we kind of wanted to we kind of wanted to do a song i mean that's why we did a five and a half minute opener because <laughs> we wanted to do a hmm. We wanted to do a song and be like, you know, have some of that. Fucking, that's how you do it, motherfuckers. Yeah, good um, idea. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so but but it's it's fun as well. But but um, I've actually had a few friends say they've watched the video and they were like, oh, I love the video. You know, laughed a lot. But it was actually when they got in their car and they just put the song on without the distraction of the video that they were like, wow, there was actually some really fucking serious lyrics to this, you know, and, mm. and they really loved it. And it it, it has a different. Um, Meaning when you just listen to it on its own, you know. Yeah, look, I, and these are my comments here, okay? So my comments alone, of course, because I host a podcast series, so I want to broadcast this as a podcast episode, if it's okay with you. But, mate, in, in this yeah, day course, and age, yeah. like, fucking... And when I say political correctness, I'm not talking about all the obvious stuff, okay? But just the way people are nitpicking on every minute detail of humour. Okay, so do you follow Dave Chappelle at all? You know, that wonderful comedian from the United States? I mean, recently he was... Yeah, being, I love Dave Chappelle. Oh, did you, have you seen the recent one? That he's put out, I can't remember what it's uh, called. But no, I, 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 I annoyingly, I had to, I, I was doing something, but I, I saw it like, you like need you know, to. I could have clicked on it. I had to scroll. All yeah. right, oh, no, look, whatever. You, it, when you've got two hours spare, whenever that might be, God knows, I know you're busy, but whenever you've got two hours spare, get a couple of babies and maybe something to smoke. Mate, watch it. You yeah. will, you, you got, you will be in absolute stitches, man. He, he just nails it. But my point around it all is, the, the, you know, the, um, the fun police. Let's call them the fun police, okay? They're even onto him yeah. these days. And I think, God, what does it take? You know, I, even, you know, I, Justin's butt cheeks showing at the end of the video. I, I, it's not that I love butt cheeks, by the way, but I love the fact that you do that. You know, I love the yeah. fact that you guys are doing that. You're and it out just there. went on a bit too long as well, didn't it? <laughs> it did. It was uncomfortably <laughs> awkward for about. 10 seconds there you go but yeah, it just <laughs> yeah that's exactly what we wanted <laughs> exactly but and and even the fact that you guys you know with the 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 haircuts that you guys did you look like Devon's hounds in for about 30 seconds or, <laughs> you know <laughs> you had all of that going on i love the fact that as i say it's monty python-esque it's it's right up, it's right up my alley in terms of the sort of humor that i love but i think you're appealing yeah to you that. know it's 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 not like straight on the nose it's yeah it's more monty python-esque instead of um you know, it's it's uh, but like it, it's 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 tongue in cheek, but then but then I think you know the the music's serious. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, you got the you chops the music to back seriously. it up. I mean, you guys are all gun musicians. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I mean, it's I mean, God, look at your look at your heritage and the guys in the band themselves have been doing this for now almost twenty years or whatever it's been. You know, I mean, you guys are yeah. bloody serious musicians. But the way I look at it is, you don't take yourself seriously, but you take the music seriously, and that's the best way to be in 2019. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks, man. It's nice to hear someone who actually gets it. Yeah, no. I don't think anyone is even offended by that album cover. Like, you know, I mean, come on. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Have, you, have you had anybody uh, tell you that they're offended by the cover? You know what I mean? By, like, you know, tweeted or Facebooked? Uh, one, or... Well, we've had a few from America, but but the, mm. it, they've been far outweighed by the positive, so, so it's all good. Wouldn't they be happy that Jesus is a strong man now and he's not going to tolerate those dastardly Romans tying him to the cross or nailing him to the cross? <laughs> Wouldn't they be happy about that? No, that's you know? Justin up there, mate. I don't know who you're talking about. 
<laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Hey, but uh, <laughs> another another thing is you would talk about you taking the music, you know, the music seriously, the side of it. One thing about this album is I actually think it's the best sounding Darkness album by far. So my question for you is: Is that who who produced it, and more to the point, who mastered it, man? Because it's really on point in that regard. Yeah. Well, um, uh, to be honest, um, embarrassingly, I don't know who mastered it off the top of my head because uh, um, no Dan, a... I think, is uh, a really great guy. He, he knows um, in London, I think. Um, so I, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But uh, but in terms of production, like obviously we. We all have a little part to say in that, but but it's mainly Dan because Dan, Dan is the Dan's the man. And he um we were doing it in his studio. And, Sorry, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's been cutting out. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I'm in the country side. It must be fucking up. I don't know. That's all good. But mate, do you, do you stick around for the for the when I say the mixing? You know what I mean. Like, do you just play your parts and then go and have a bevy, or how does it work in regards to your your contribution? No, we're 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 there. We're there the whole time. Yeah. Um uh yeah, they're long they were long days those eight months. Um some of them were twelve. Eight hours, months, you know. Jesus. It took you eight yeah, months. Yeah, eight to... months it, Yeah, we approached it differently and everything. We we just we spent time uh getting the song arrangements down before we even went to the studio kind of thing, you know. Mate, no wonder it sounds like what it does. I mean eight months is a bloody long time in 2019 and 18 to be spending on an album but it, it shows i mean i think this is yeah. this is probably i think this is do, do you would you say i mean i know this is a question that you might not be able to answer but do you think this is the best album in terms of sound and also song wise that you've been a part of with the band definitely that's what i'm thinking yeah, yeah. i can hear that yeah, there's a lot of intent in this one it's good rock and roll, and mate, are you guys doing all the European tour things? Come, you know the festivals that are coming. Well, they're not coming up for you guys. They're next year, aren't they? But you know what I mean. This is music that I think will yeah, be done yeah, really yeah. well. We'll, yeah, we'll do it. We, we do that stuff every year. We um usually, um yeah, we'll be doing that. But we've got a lot of our own touring to do with this album. Hmm. So That's how, what we're really looking forward to. Really. But how do you how do you personally balance everything? I mean, obviously you, you've got the Queen thing going on as, on as well. Do you just do you just hope that the no, no, I, I, I'm not doing that anymore. Oh, you're you're not okay. Gotcha. All right, but the isn't Queen coming here in? Is it next year? I, I've definitely got tickets for it. I don't know what it is, but my mate bought me tickets. But you're not going to be a part of that. That's a shame, mate. I was hoping to see you up there. Yeah, no, no, I did. I did five years um, with them, and then as soon as I joined the Darkness, it was getting too much juggling the two tours at the same time. I was flying from country to country to country, yeah, all in in a few days, you know, and literally no sleep so it was, it was just getting ridiculous so yeah I mean, as great as it was um i had to uh go off and do my own thing you know so is is somebody else stepping in for you in that role there or is your dad just going to be doing the queen shows yeah no no so someone else steps in for me uh they've changed the set a bit and uh you know yeah um uh but but yeah but yeah, he's great. He's great. Really good. Really amazing player and singer. I'm not. I'm not surprised from the perspective that you've got to focus on the darkness a lot more now because it, it feels like this album is going to be a second win for you guys. I know. I know the band has been going for a long time. I get all of that, but I just feel like, especially because of the fact that, and you've nailed it. I mean, I'm hearing all this I, I, again. My comments, but bands like, you know, fucking Imagine Dragons and all this shit that isn't rock and roll but it's classified as rock and roll but can you believe the Grammys they don't even well they have a rock category I think but they don't put rock bands in the rock category at this point in time and I think it's really yeah, important but, I mean I've, I've, I've always said it you, 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 everyone you, I mean I probably shouldn't say it but just look up the list of people who haven't won a Grammy yes you won't believe it mm. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's all silly, mate. You know, but it's like it's like the bands that are in the rock and roll aren't in the rock and roll hall of hall of fame. It's it's like really what Iron Maiden no, aren't in the rock and roll it's, hall of fame, really? It's, yeah, it's no, it's, it's um, yeah. There's a lot of stuff like that which just doesn't make sense. I think the Beatles haven't won one Grammy, and and I think Kanye West has won thirty or something. You know, it's like, I mean, you know, yeah. oh, it's it's <laughs> ridiculous. Up. Yeah, it's. I mean, look. At the end of the day, those things are bloody popularity contests and they're all about the way the American media wants to present certain artists and they don't care about genres yeah. and they don't care about regular people. They're basically a club, aren't they? They're not really doing it for the benefit of the artist or the people. 
those, those things. No, They've never exactly. been about that. I, I'm really on board with what Eddie Trunk, you've probably even met Eddie Trunk, but I'm really on board with how... Yeah, I have, actually. Yeah, he's a good bloke, isn't he? Yeah, really nice guy. Yeah, we had a great interview with him and just... Yeah, I feel like if it wasn't for him sometimes in the United States, I know there are some outliers out there, but specifically Eddie really gets the media and he really knows how to work it. But if it wasn't for him talking about rock and roll and heavy metal, we wouldn't have a voice in the US. Yeah. You know, it gets a bit Yeah, like yeah, it. yeah. You know, I mean, I try to do Steve my own Jones thing. Steve Jones is great as well. Oh, yeah, steve is doing some fantastic work, isn't he, over there? You know, he's... um. Yeah, hasn't he hasn't he sort of kicked on, hasn't he? You know, I mean, it's almost at a point now where if you say Steve Jones to people of a certain age group, they would go, who are the Sex Pistols? Or maybe they wouldn't say who are the Sex Pistols, but they'd definitely go, oh, Steve-O, he's the podcaster and broadcaster, not yeah. the guy who was the guitarist in the Sex Pistols. Yeah, I know. It's warped. Mm. But, uh, but hey, that's why we're flying the old flag nice and high. You are indeed. Mate, I think I'd better let you go, actually. You've probably got another one coming through, have you? Uh, yeah, I do. I should probably answer it. Cool, mate. All right, it's been a pleasure chatting to you, mate. This is actually the second time we've chatted. It's always a pleasure, mate. Hope we get to catch up again in the near future. Likewise, mate. Thanks again. Thanks, mate. No worries. Catch ya. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series that syndicates for the A-List Online, and my name is Andrew Mackay-Smith. That interview subject was Rufus Tiger Taylor from the outfit The Darkness, and he's also been known to perform in his dad's band, Queen. Thanks so much for listening.